So this is just going to be a kind of a, a quick talk about uh, our proposals for enhancements that Justin insisted on calling poems. <laughs> uh, so, but basically this is our process. Um, one of the, the pieces of feedback that we got are, you know, I'd never do this, but we're accused of occasionally changing the code base in drastic ways that imposes hardships upon our users. Um, uh, and then as part of that, Justin said, you know what, uh, this is a solved problem. Other open source communities do this. They have some sort of enhancement proposal. Python has peps. Uh, we will have, have poems, uh, po uh, procedure, or sorry, proposals for open MDO enhancement in something. Uh, <laughs> and, and, okay. <laughs> Make the font bigger, all right. So, um, so I just wanted to go over kind of, uh, and then Justin likes to uh, give me a hard time because a few months ago, I was saying, you know what, we're really not getting a lot of suggestions. There's not a whole lot in the way of new, new features coming in. And then just recently, um, a whole string of things has been coming in from external users. We appreciate it. I've talked to people in private industry. If you work for an organization that doesn't want you like essentially going out and requesting things in, uh, in public, you know, on behalf of your organization, if you would like to contact myself or Justin or anybody else on the team, we will happily, you know, distill your thoughts about what we should do into a poem and, and uh, do it for you. Um, but, but really, it's, it's just kind of like the, the process that we go down through. We have, um, we're, we're up to poem 74, I think. We've just... Uh, integrated 73, although there's a few outliers here that aren't, aren't quite in, in the code yet. Um, and there's, there's several that we've rejected, either for, you know, we just don't think this is a good idea, or no, here's a better way of doing this, we'll reject this, you know, this, this proposed uh, of way of handling this. Um, so if we work backwards, uh, the, the oldest poem uh, that is outstanding right now, um, Two of these were proposed by Josh up here, and I think they're both fantastic ideas. Um, the first one here is poem 69, which is to declare, declare residual names uh, for components. And, and when I read this poem, uh, I, I think my, my first instinct was, like, why haven't we been doing things this way? This should be the way we were doing things the entire time. Why, why has it taken us this long? Um, so, but basically, the, the gist of this idea is that <clears throat> I have an implicit component. It has some residuals. Um, we name those residuals as like, you know, uh, essentially those residuals share the state name in the component. But in reality, what you want to do, what I think a lot of users want to do is say, no, no, it's like I, I have this variable. This variable is the residual uh, that pertains to, to this implicit output. They are different things, um, but it's just, it's, it's a much more natural way of handling it. Uh, we actually, uh, we've been a little slow to take up the implementation of, of that just because there's some details we need to work out. But at the end of the day, um, it's possible, and it, I think as long as, as long as everything's defined in a single component, it really shouldn't matter to the outside world of OpenMDAO um, how, your, how your component see, sees things as long as you're being consistent there. Um, the next one that isn't, is not yet merged is poem 71. Uh, exec comp we use a lot. I think it's, it's I don't want to call it a crutch, but it's a way of, of implementing a system really quickly with a, you know, if you, if you know an equation that, that governs what you want to do and you want to implement it very quickly, it works great. Um, this poem is born out of the fact that in Dimos we had users who were using exec comps to provide outputs for, for uh, an ODE. And for those of you that have used Dimos, you know that in Dimos, your ODEs compute all points in the trajectory simultaneously. And therefore, this one has a sparsity pattern that in general, you know, if this is a scalar input and a scalar output, you're going to have a diagonal sparsity pattern. Dimos only works well if you have very sparse systems, so you need that functionality. Um, previously, we had handled that by saying, oh, it has diag partials. Uh, covered this this very simple use case. 
if you forgot to put that, your model suffered, and, and basically a lot of your, you know, a lot of your um, constraints and, and objective were essentially densely related to to everything when that when that just shouldn't be the case, and it horribly slowed down uh, slowed down optimizations. Um, and one of the things that we've developed since uh, since the Hasdiag partials of exec comp came to being was the notion of coloring for partial derivatives in individual components. For a while now, we've been, been able to provide what we call derivative coloring, or essentially figuring out the minimum, uh, the minimum number of linear solves we need to do to calculate the, the uh, total derivatives across a system. We wanna be able to do that for subsystems as well. That's the point of partial coloring, uh, or, uh, which is the method is declare coloring on a system. Works really well. Um, but if you weren't doing that, and if you had forgotten that Hasdag uh, partials exec comp was being slow, so this one is basically just say, look, we know how to do this. We should be doing this automatically. Let's let's uh, wrap in that behavior so that a user doesn't have to think about these things to activate these things to get good behavior out of the code. The code should behave as well as we can make it behave by default. Uh, let's see. Uh, another one born out of uh, this work on aviary and, and some of the electric aircraft stuff is the ability to modify bounds and scaling after the output or design variable or you know uh, are are created so uh, or or uh, response are created so uh, how do I explain this in in dimos uh, you know I'm, I, I always say in dimos because that's the world I live in and I, I, I primarily see through things through the dimos colored glasses but in dimos you know I might have a really complicated system this system might impose its own constraints for the optimizer and when I declare these constraints here's the scaling that those provide um, if I build a very complex model to which that component is only one small piece, then when I'm done, if my scaling isn't correct, I have to find that component in, in the system, go through and, and edit it in order to change, oh no, this is the scaling that I want on that, on that constraint. Which is not really good practice from a uh, software engineering standpoint. I don't want to touch code that came from somebody else. You know, if I make other changes to code and I push them back up, I don't want to accidentally push up changes I made to the scaling in that model. So a lot of this is the ability to, let's define my model up front, let me be able to modify things about my model, whether they be uh, constraint scaling, constraint bounds, or um, residual scaling after the fact. So when I do, uh, you know, add, add output of an implicit system, don't force me to know how that should be scaled when I do it there. Let me change it later. I feel like, I feel like people will appreciate that. <laughs> um, and then uh, let's see the newest poem that just recently came in. This is also from Josh, which is another fantastic idea, and another one that just you know embarrasses me as 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 the development team lead that we didn't think of it. But you know if. Uh, there's plenty of ways of suggesting uh, string matching in, in software these days. There, there are ways of doing that. So if you try to issue a connection in OpenMDO and it says, hey, you tried to connect from A to B and B doesn't exist, we really should be saying B doesn't exist, but you know, Bob does. Do, did you mean that you want to connect this A to Bob? And, and it's really simple things like that again, that is the development team members, we're always thinking of like, how do I make the partials, you know, how do I make this faster, how do I get better partials out of it? The user experience things we don't always think of, so when we are making your lives difficult, please let us know, because this is a really like good change that's not terribly difficult to implement. But hats off to Josh, because he already implemented it for us, we just more or less have to check it out and merge it in. So I, again, I just, I just want to emphasize to everybody, Please make our, our, you know, please make sure we are doing our jobs and making our lives easier. Um, not a whole lot else here. I don't know if there's any poems to talk about that have closed. A lot of the poems that have come up lately are things like, oh, here's an idea for a new report uh, that I have and, and things like that. Um, some performance improvements that, that, that Brett implemented. Um, but again, like, whatever feedback you can give us to help us. And I should talk about this here because I, I didn't really mention it earlier. We generally rely on Stack Overflow online as like this is how people are going to ask how to do things with OpenMDAO. I know on GitHub there's the potential to have like discussion boards on there now. 
I think we have a bad history with discussion boards and then getting spammed. And while I don't know if that's the case with Open with uh, with GitHub, I'm also a little leery about completely tying us to, to all of their infrastructure. Um, but if if you think that there's a better way for the user to interact with the development team, you know, I th I think we'd be happy to look at those alternatives. Um, but I'm I'm happy to hear, uh, you know, just let let us know what we can do to make interacting with, with the development team easier for you all so that we can make your lives easier. That's pretty much all I have. I'm happy to field any questions. Justin's got a mic back there. Any questions on the poem process? Or comments. Comments are welcome. Criticisms, encouragements. Hi, uh, hi this is Adel again. Uh, an external Slack channel probably could be very useful, connecting with the developers directly. I'm sorry, could you say that again, please? Uh, external ex Slack channel. External, external Slack, Slack channel. channel. Okay. We can either Slack or possibly Discord. Yeah, we could talk about maybe making a public Slack channel. I'm not totally sure how that would work, but. Okay. You want me to give up all my fake internet points on Stack Overflow? I don't, I don't. <laughs> Any other feedback on the process or on, you know? Okay. Yes, sir. What happened to that uh, Jira type board where you could see what was being worked on at any given time and what was in the backlog? I, I used to look at that all the time. Uh, so we the one, the one that wasn't supposed to be public. Yeah. <laughs> so we hid that. Um, we, we do right now have a, have a private board that's more or less, it's, it's integrated in GitHub with GitHub projects, but we use GitHub projects to kind of prioritize the work that we're doing. Uh, while that is private, you can also see more or less what issues, if you, if you look at our issues, you can kind of see who's assigned to them right now, and that, that gives an idea of um, what you don't get to see, I don't think, well, you don't get to see an easy ver uh, view of the uh, priority at, at a glance of like what, what we currently think is most important to be done. I guess what I think is most in, important to be done. Um, again, if you, I, you could manually see that through, but I, I don't necessarily have any um, opposition to opening that up to be publicly visible, but it, it was really just intended as a way to, to help me keep my arms wrapped around all the work that was going on. If there aren't any other questions, thank you very much, Rob. And we'll All right. swap to the next presentation. Thank you.